Have you ever asked yourself, how does the delicate balance between interest rates, inflation, and monetary policy affect the economy? An intriguing question indeed, and one that holds the key to understanding the complex machinery of our global financial system. You see, interest rates, inflation, and monetary policy are like the three legs of a stool. They must be in harmony to maintain equilibrium. If one leg is too short or too long, the stool topples. Similarly, if one of these economic variables gets out of sync, it can lead to economic instability. Interest rates are a tool used by central banks to control the flow of money in an economy. When interest rates are high, borrowing money becomes expensive and people tend to save more. Conversely, when rates are low, borrowing is cheaper and people are encouraged to spend more, stimulating the economy. Inflation, on the other hand, is the rate at which the general level of prices for goods and services is rising. While a moderate level of inflation is a sign of a healthy economy, too much inflation can erode purchasing power and lead to economic stagnation. Monetary policy is the method by which a country's central bank controls the supply of money, often targeting an inflation rate or interest rate to ensure price stability and general trust in the currency. It's like the conductor of an orchestra ensuring all elements work together in harmony. But striking the right balance is a delicate act. Central banks must carefully calibrate their policies to prevent the economy from overheating, leading to excessive inflation, or from cooling too much, leading to stagnation. The interplay between these three economic variables is a constant balancing act. It's a juggling act that requires precision, foresight, and a deep understanding of the economic landscape. And like a game of chess, one wrong move can have far-reaching consequences. So let's delve deeper into this intricate dance. Let's unravel the complexities of interest rates, inflation, and monetary policy, and see how they shape our economy and our lives. Today, we unravel the mysteries behind these economic factors and their interplay. Interest rates. We hear about them all the time, but do we really know what they mean? Let's take a closer look. At its core, an interest rate is simply the cost of borrowing money. It's the price you pay for the privilege of using someone else's cash. And just like any other price, it's determined by supply and demand. When lots of people want to borrow, rates go up. When fewer people want to borrow, rates go down. Now here's where it gets interesting. Interest rates don't just impact borrowers, they also affect savers. When rates are high, savers earn more on their deposits, encouraging more savings. When rates are low, savers earn less, which can discourage savings and encourage spending instead. So why do we care about all of this? Well, interest rates are one of the most powerful tools that central banks have at their disposal to guide the economy. By raising or lowering rates, they can influence spending and saving habits and thereby control inflation and stimulate economic growth. For instance, if the economy is overheating and inflation is high, a central bank might raise interest rates to cool things down. This makes borrowing more expensive and saving more attractive, which can slow down spending and reduce inflation. On the other hand, if the economy is in a slump, the central bank might lower interest rates to stimulate growth. This makes borrowing cheaper and saving less attractive, which can boost spending and kickstart the economy. But it's not as simple as it sounds. Too high interest rates can stifle growth and lead to recession, while too low rates can spur runaway inflation. It's a delicate balancing act that requires careful monitoring and adjustment. And of course, these decisions have real-world implications for businesses and consumers alike. From the cost of your mortgage to the return on your savings account, interest rates touch every corner of the economy. So, interest rates, a powerful tool that can steer the economic ship but not without its challenges. Inflation, a term often dreaded by consumers and economists alike. But what exactly is it? Let's imagine a scenario. You've just been given a raise at work and you're feeling pretty good about it. You're thinking about all the things you can now afford with your increased income. But then you notice the prices at your local grocery store have also gone up. That's inflation for you in a nutshell. The general increase in prices and fall in purchasing power of money over time. Inflation is like a stealthy pickpocket, subtly diminishing the value of your money. You still have the same amount in your wallet, but it just doesn't stretch as far. That's because when prices rise, each unit of currency buys fewer goods and services, which can erode the purchasing power of consumers and businesses. But inflation isn't all bad news. In fact, it's a normal part of a healthy economy. Mild inflation can actually stimulate spending and investment. Think about it. 
If you knew the price of a car was going to be higher next year, wouldn't you be more likely to buy it this year? This increased demand can spur economic growth and job creation. However, when inflation gets too high, it can create uncertainty and can lead to less spending and investment, slowing down economic growth. It's a delicate balance. Central banks aim to maintain a low steady rate of inflation, typically around 2% per year. This allows the economy to grow without overheating and triggering runaway inflation. Inflation also impacts interest rates, which we'll discuss in the next scene. When inflation is high, central banks may raise interest rates to cool down the economy. On the flip side, when inflation is low, they may lower interest rates to stimulate spending and investment. Inflation then is a double-edged sword, capable of both stimulating and stifling economic growth. It's the delicate balancing act central banks must perform to keep the economy stable and growing. Stay with us as we delve into the intricacies of monetary policy in the next scene. Monetary policy, a phrase that might sound complicated, but in reality, it's an essential tool for economic stability. You see, monetary policy is the method by which a nation's central bank controls the supply of money, often targeting an inflation rate or interest rate to ensure price stability and general trust in the currency. Think of it as the economic equivalent of a thermostat, adjusting the temperature or in this case the money supply to keep things comfortable and stable. Now, you might be wondering, how does it work? Well, central banks have a few tricks up their sleeves. They can adjust the reserve requirements, which is the amount of money that banks must have on hand. By changing this requirement, central banks can influence how much money banks can lend out, thus controlling the money supply. Another tool is open market operations. This involves buying or selling government bonds. When the central bank buys bonds, it injects money into the economy. And when it sells bonds, it does the opposite, taking money out of circulation. Lastly, there's the discount rate, which is the interest rate that central banks charge commercial banks for short-term loans. By adjusting this rate, central banks can influence borrowing costs and thus consumer spending and investment. So why does all this matter? Well, by controlling the money supply, central banks can influence inflation and economic growth. Too much money in circulation can lead to inflation while too little can stifle growth. It's a delicate balancing act. And this balance is crucial. If inflation gets too high, the purchasing power of money decreases which can lead to economic instability. On the other hand, if growth is too slow, it can lead to unemployment and economic stagnation. Monetary policy, therefore, is the balancing act that keeps our economic tightrope in check. It's the unseen force that guides our economy, ensuring that it doesn't swing too far in one direction or the other. It's the unsung hero of economic stability, working tirelessly behind the scenes to keep things running smoothly. Now that we understand these elements, how do they interact in the real world? Interest rates, inflation, and monetary policy are like the gears of a complex clock, each one affecting the other, turning and spinning in response to changes in economic conditions. Let's delve into their interplay. Imagine a scenario where inflation is rising at an alarming pace, prices are surging, and the value of money is eroding. In this situation, the central bank steps in, wielding its monetary policy like a shield. It raises the interest rates, making borrowing money more expensive, consumers curtail their spending, businesses cut back on investments, and the economy slows down, putting a break on inflation. On the flip side, when the economy is sluggish, the central bank can lower interest rates to stimulate growth. Cheaper borrowing costs encourage businesses to invest and consumers to spend, creating demand and kickstarting the economy. But if it's overdone, it could stoke the fires of inflation. You see, it's a delicate seesaw. The central bank must strike a balance between controlling inflation and fostering economic growth. It's like a tightrope walker balancing on a thin line, with the dangers of recession on one side and rampant inflation on the other. Now, let's consider another factor, expectations. If businesses and consumers anticipate higher inflation, they may demand higher wages or increased prices, which can, in turn, fuel inflation. To prevent this self-fulfilling prophecy, central banks must manage expectations through clear communication and credible policy actions. That's not all. The central bank's decisions also reverberate globally. In our interconnected world, a change in interest rates in one country can impact foreign exchange rates, capital flows, and economic conditions in other countries. So, you see, the interplay of interest rates, inflation, and monetary policy is a complex dance, 
with each move affecting the other. It's a delicate dance, a balancing act that keeps the economy spinning. So, what does this mean for you and me? Well, the interplay of interest rates, inflation, and monetary policy has direct and indirect impacts on our day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the cost of borrowing. When interest rates rise, it becomes more expensive to borrow money. This can affect everything from your ability to afford a new car or a home to the interest you pay on your credit card. Conversely, when interest rates fall, borrowing money becomes cheaper, which can stimulate spending and investment. Now let's consider the price of groceries. Inflation is essentially the rate at which the general level of prices for goods and services is rising. If inflation is high, you might notice that your weekly grocery bill is slowly creeping up. This is because as prices rise, each unit of currency buys fewer goods and services. So in an environment with high inflation, your money doesn't stretch as far as it once did. But it's not all doom and gloom. Changes in these factors can also create opportunities. For instance, when interest rates are low, it can be a good time to borrow money for investments like starting a business or buying property. And while inflation can make goods and services more expensive, it can also lead to higher wages, as employers may increase pay to keep up with the cost of living. Monetary policy, the tool used by central banks to control interest rates and inflation, plays a crucial role in maintaining economic stability. By adjusting these levers, central banks aim to keep inflation at a target rate, usually around 2%, to ensure steady economic growth without the economy overheating. In the end, it's all about balance. The art of monetary policy is in juggling these factors to encourage economic prosperity while preventing economic instability. It's a complex and delicate task, but one that has profound implications for our everyday lives. Understanding these concepts then can help us navigate the economic waves with a little more ease. So there we have it, the intricate balance of interest rates, inflation, and monetary policy. In a nutshell, we've taken a deep dive into the complex relationship between these three critical components that make the wheels of our economy turn. We've seen how interest rates set by central banks are more than just numbers. They're powerful tools that influence the cost of borrowing, affect spending and saving habits, and ultimately shape the economic landscape. We've unpacked inflation, that seemingly elusive concept, often heard but seldom understood. It's not just about prices going up, it's a reflection of the economy's health. When managed well, it indicates a growing economy. But left unchecked, it can erode purchasing power and create economic instability. And then there's monetary policy, the conductor of this economic orchestra aiming to keep the melody of growth and the rhythm of stability in harmony. By adjusting interest rates and controlling the money supply, central banks strive to maintain this delicate balance. They aim to prevent inflation from running too hot, without quenching the fires of economic growth. The dance of these economic forces is continuous, intricate, and impacts every one of us. From the price of your morning cup of coffee to the returns on your retirement savings, from the cost of your home loan to the health of your business, these forces are at play. Understanding them empowers us to make informed decisions, to anticipate changes, and to navigate the economic seas with greater confidence. The world of economics is vast and complex, but don't let that deter you. As we've seen, it's also incredibly fascinating, filled with insights that help us make sense of the world around us. It's a world where every decision, every policy, every rate change is a thread woven into the larger tapestry of our economic story. Remember, every economic decision, big or small, is part of this grand dance. So keep learning. Keep asking questions and keep exploring the fascinating world of economics.